Hi there. Welcome to another edition of Talkin' Tabletop. Today, we are going to be learning how to play Keyforge by Richard Garfield in Fantasy Flight Games. Now, let's go to the table and forge some keys. So in the game of Keyforge, what you will need to begin. First of all, you're going to need a deck. You can see here, every deck will have a unique name and a unique Archon image. It will also have three of the seven houses that are currently in development, with more possibly on the way soon. Your deck will have 36 cards, each with different rarities and different combinations therein, and have a QR code that you can scan in the free Master Vault app so that you can register your deck and brag to all your friends about the cards that are in it. In your deck, you'll also find a number of different cards, like creatures, upgrades, artifacts, and actions, some of which will even gain amber. You'll also need a number of tokens for amber, for damage, and you can use either tokens or cards to signify stun and plus power. You'll need a way to track chains in case your deck gains any, which is a way to limit the number of cards you have in hand, and some way to track the three keys that you will need. In the game, we are not trying to destroy each other. We are trying to race to the be, be the first player to forge three keys. How you do so is by losing amber at the beginning of your turn. If ever you have six or more amber, you lose six and forge a key. Now, you can only forge one key per turn in the forge a key step, even if you have enough amber to forge more than one. After the forge a key step, you will then choose your house. It can be any of the three houses from your deck, and then you may play, use, or discard any number of cards from that house, unless a card ability says otherwise, but we won't cover that here. So, on your turn, if you were to, say, call house Logos, you could play any of the action cards, or any creature cards, any upgrades or artifacts that would match that house's symbol. Note that any creatures or artifacts always come into play exhausted, signifying that they can't be used this turn. However, upgrade cards, because they don't exhaust, are attached to a creature, giving them a new ability and actions are simply played for their ability and then discarded after use. Once you've done all that you want to do with playing, using, or discarding cards, mind you, the using, pretty straightforward. Anything that is ready matching that house, you can exhaust and use its abilities to do a number of things which we'll get into in a moment. And any cards of that house that I choose, I could also discard. Once that's finished, I then ready up any cards that were exhausted at the end of my turn, and I draw back up until my hand reaches six cards. My turn then passes to my opponent, who follows these same steps in order. As far as using cards go, you will see a number of different abilities on cards, some of which, as I said, are played, the ability is used, any amber is gained, and then they are discarded. Some, in the case of artifacts or creatures, can be used to do a few things. Most of your artifacts will have an action ability, like Mother Gun here, which lets me reveal any number of Mars cards from my hand and deal damage equal to that number to an opposing creature. You would simply exhaust and use the action provided that Mars was my active house. In addition to that, I could use any creature that I have that is ready as long as it's part of the active house I've claimed. So in this example here, I have two Sanctum creatures that I could use to fight 
reap, or use any actions they may have. Some of them, like Neutron Shark, has an ability as soon as he comes into play. Fight abilities will trigger on a creature any time they deal damage to another creature and survive the fight at the end. So in the case of Champion Tabris here, I could ask it to fight Neutron Shark. It deals an amount of damage equal to its power to its opponent and vice versa. We track the damage using damage counters. If my creature survives the fight, at the end, I get to trigger its ability. Also note that there are armor on certain cards. So in the case of Champion Tabris here, this is a once per turn soak of damage. That means both on my turn and it refreshes on my opponent's turn. So in the case of this battle here, Champion Tabris would hit Neutron Shark for a huge amount of six damage and destroy it. Whereas Neutron Shark would deal one to Champion Tabris, but that armor is gonna soak that damage. So no damage is taken. We then trigger any fight abilities if necessary or any destroyed abilities that an opponent's creature might have. And then we move on to the next activation we'd like to do. The other option your creatures have is they can always reap. You would exhaust the card and gain one amber, generally placed on either your Archon card or on one of your keys, just so you can help your opponent keep track of how much you have. If your character has any reap abilities, like Protectrix here, you can also trigger that ability. Otherwise, they would just reap for an amount of amber and gain that. Other characters you, may, you might see have an action ability. This is something that doesn't necessarily gain amber, nor is it used during a fight. You simply would exhaust the creature and get to do that ability. Most of the time, this is some interesting special thing that a creature has that might be more beneficial than using them to fight or to reap with. Also take note that certain characters might have special abilities. These are gonna be called passive abilities. They could be things like elusive or skirmish or any number of other abilities, but we'll get into those in a later video. And that's pretty straightforward. I'm trying to gain as much amber as I can on my turn so that I can forge all three of my keys before my opponent does the same. So there you have it. That was Key Forge. You now know how to play. Join us in part two for some certain rules clarifications that people may have. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell so you can find more great content like this. And also check us out on your favorite podcast forums. But until next time, we'll see you at the table. Get nerdy with me. Tell me what game that you get on. Is it card or read? What kind of class do you play, girl? In an RPG.